Bhagavad Gita in Ramayana. So, let me first start off by telling you the relationship between these two very, very great scriptures. People who are intellectually oriented, they say that Bhagavad Gita is the greatest scripture of India. And those who are bhakti oriented, they say Ramayana is the greatest scripture of India. We say in Trinidad that the language needs to be changed. Instead of having one greatest, which is a singular word, greatest, we have two greatest. We are very good at changing language in Trinidad. And we have greatest meaning two now, plural. So two greatest scriptures of India. You know, let me, as we are speaking about that, tell you that in the Jnana Marga, Jnana tradition in India, we have what we call as the Prasthana Tre. Prasthana, prasthana Tre means the three main scriptures in Jnana Marga. And that will be Brahma Sutra, Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita. Huh? Brahma Sutra, Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita. Prasthana Traya Jnana Marga. Where? The Bhakti tradition of India also has Prasthana Traya. And that Prasthana Traya is just as important as Jnana Marga Prasthana Traya. And what is the Prasthana Traya of Bhakti Marga? It is Ram Charita Manas, which we are going to be seeing now, Ramayana and Bhagavata and Narada Bhakti Sutra. Ram Chaita Manas, Bhagavatam, Narada Bhakti Sutra. This is Prasthana Traya in Bhakti Marga. So now, next question will arise. So what, what there is a big difference between Bhakti Marga and Jnana Marga? No difference. Really. The one who is really well balanced Balanced individual, one with samatva, hmm? balanced individual will be able to, you know like when you eat, when you eat dal and bhat, hmm? dal chawa, you know, you never see anybody, you know, all of you who are listening, you will know this, you will never see anybody, though I have seen once, when we were children, one man used to come to our house just to amuse children. What he used to do? Drink all the dal. First, drink all the dal. Then, eat all the red chawal, like that. And after doing this too, then he used to shake his belly to mix both of them. Now, you know, we don't eat like that. What we do? We mix the dal chawal with our hands. And then we put in our mouth. We don't want, we don't like the taste of just plain chawal. What is plain chawal? Who likes yeah, Canada chawal? Or we don't like plain dal, dal alone, you know. So when we mix, we get the enjoyment like that. So in the very same way, those who are really balanced, they see that this. Bhakti Marga and this Jnana Marga, really, they are teaching the same thing only. And this is where this Bhagavad Gita and Ramayana come together. Now look here. You know, if you are having a drama, you will have a script for the drama. So if you sit in your room, you can read the whole script and you will know what is going on in the drama, correct or not? You can read the whole script of the drama in your bedroom, sit down there, you read the script, or you say, oh, just like all, how all of us study Shakespeare in school. In school they made us study Shakespeare, isn't it? So we study Shakespeare in the classroom. But you can also go to the theater without reading the script. You can go to the theater and you can sit there and look at the drama of Shakespeare, isn't it? So now, in the end, what would you learn? Same thing, isn't it? 
if you study, you sit in your classroom or in your bedroom and you read Shakespeare's King Lear or Macbeth or whatever, or you go to the theater and you look at Macbeth on stage, then in the end, what you end up learning? Same thing. But they are two different uh, media as though, isn't it? So now, it is Bhagavad Gita and Ramayana is like this. This first thing. And one is like the script and the other is like the drama on stage. Which is the script? Bhagavad Gita is the script. And Ramayana is the drama on stage. Like that. So whatever is taught in the Bhagavad Gita, by Bhagavan Sri Krishna, you will see there Bhagavan Ram is enacting that thing. Or, or the character of the Ramayana, they are all enacting that. Right? Uh, like for example, when Bhagavan talks in Bhagavad Gita about giving up Krodh, Kam, Krodh, Ityadi. Kam, Krodh, Thalova, Trividam, Narakasyedam. These three are doors to hell. Tasma eta trem jajet. They will drop all these three. Well, whenever Lakshmana gets angry, Bhagavan Ram says, Lakshmana, this anger, or whatever it is, this will not work. Let us try something else. You see? So, whatever is being taught by Bhagavan Sri Krishna there in the script is being enacted here on the drama of the stage of Ramayana, like that. Huh? This is one way to see the relationship. Some people say, say oh, what is this? But the uh, Ramayana came first. And then Bhagavad Gita came after. The Ramayana came in Treta Yuga. And Bhagavad Gita came in Dwapar Yuga. So how? The, the, the drama came first and the script came after. Some people say like that. And then look here, in Hinduism, See, if you ask that type of question, right, that means to say you have been taught to think in a linear fashion. You've been taught to think in a linear fashion. Hmm? And that is not Hindu thinking. Hindu thinking is what? Time is not linear, it is, it is cyclical, isn't it? So what you have? Satyug, Tretayug, Dvapar Yuga, Kali Yuga, and again Satyuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapar Yuga, Kali Yuga, Treta Yuga, like that, it keeps going on and on. Now in a circle, which is first and which is second? Which is beginning and which is end in a circle? There is no beginning or end, isn't it? So we know the time in our uh, scriptural tradition is a cyclical thing. Eh? So when Kali is over, then there is a lull, and then again Satyu starts, then Trita Yuga, So Ramayana and Gita, they have come and gone countless times. So no, one is before the other or anything like that. Eh? It's script. It's usually in ordinary life, script is first, and then the drama is after. Eh? But here, in this case, we talk, we talk about time in different terms. Huh? Or, so, one way to look at the relationship between Gita and Ramayana is one is script and one is the act on the stage. Ramayana is the act of the whole script of Gita. Second way to look our sages and saints say, and really if you study, you will see, Ramayana, and when, we, when I say Ramayana, I am referring to Ram Charita Manas of Goswami Tulsi Das. I am not referring to Ramayana of Bhagavad Gita, which is much more ancient and all that. So, Ramayana, he says, is a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita. Our Santa Tulsi Das Ji was a very, very, very great scholar of all the scriptures of India. He tells himself, Nana Purana Nigamagama Sammatam Yad Ramayani Kidatam Pachdanyadu. In this line, he is included in this Ramayana all the scriptures of India. He is a great scholar of all the scriptures of India. So, he used this Ramayana to 
as a commentary on Bhagavad Gita. Comes like a commentary on Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Now, this is a second way to look at this relationship between Bhagavad Gita and Rama. So, just like how we have, you know, uh, Bhagavan Shankaracharya gives commentary on all the Upanishads, he gives commentary on all Gita, he gives commentary on so many things. So, so Siddhaj has given commentary on Bhagavad Gita through this Ramayana. And there are many, many places in the Ramayana, we will see some of them during this week, many, many places where it appears as though he is quoting directly from Bhagavad Gita, he's just taking his Sanskrit words and he's putting them in Avati language. That is all. So, this is uh, another way to see this relationship. Now, where is this, de is this demonstrated and how it is demonstrated? How is what demonstrated? Where the script is written in Gita and the act is given there in Rama. How is this? Now, this is what we'll be studying this week. We'll take uh, episodes from the Rama and we'll see how the same thing is said here in Bhagavad Gita. Okay? All right. Is that okay? Speaking from one another. All right. Now, today, let me introduce this story, very interesting story. And the story is called as the Marich Prasanga. Marich Prasanga in the Aranya Kanta. Huh? Now listen. And we'll see how this is connected to what in Bhagavad Gita. What is Marish Katha connected to in Bhagavad Gita? Okay. So now, see Marish. This is Aranya Kanda after number 24. Aranya 24. Thank you. 
He is the Lord of all moving and unmoving things in this universe. Taso ta, bayaru nai ki jai. You don't make enmity with this Rama. It is not going to be in your good interest to make enmity with this Rama. Mare Maria Maria Jiai Jiai. He has life and death in his hands. With one wink, he can eliminate you. You know. Muni mak ada nama Rama. Rama tu tak macam tu. How you know all this? अरे मुनि मखर आखर ने गया हुए थे कुमारा एक ऐसा कुमार यंग यंग टीनेजर यंग बॉय ही वेंट टू प्रोटेक्ट दी यज्ञा ऑफ दैट विश्वामित्र जी ही वेंट टू नॉट प्रोटेक्ट ही वेंट देयर टू डिस्ट्रॉय दैट यज्ञा आई वेंट देयर मारिच वेंट देयर डिस्ट्रॉय दैट यज्ञा एंड दैट राव वाज देयर एंड सेस Bino para sara wala pati mo yung mara and that Rama as a teenager mo yung he struck me with an arrow a headless arrow and saka jo jana aya ho chana mahi and threw me as a teenager he struck me with an arrow and threw me 700 miles across the ocean like that Dinasana bayaru kiye kiye bal nahi it is not in your interest not going to be good for you to make any kill that Rama right so this is the introduction of Maharaj and Bhagwan Rao and Rao and Hindi. Now if we jump in the same katha, few lines down, just before 27, so one line before 27 and one line after 27, we will see that. But what is happening now? How is this marriage related to whatever is going on in Bhagavad Gita? It seems like it's not related, but it is. You will see this. What does this marriage represent in Bhagavad Gita? Whatever is being taught in Bhagavad Gita, marriage will represent something there. Let us just see these two lines and then we will come back to this question. Now, what does marriage represent in Bhagavad Gita? Just before 27, one line.
पूछो नहीं था चंचल माइंड स्वामी विवेकानंद जी सृष्टि को बराबर चंचल माइंड वो चंचल माइंड रिफ्लेक्शन वट इज दीनिंग ऑफ चंचल माइंड चंचल मीन्स फिकल Or what is the meaning of fickle? It means a mind that jumps from one thing to the other constantly. And the nature of the world is, in every atom there is a positive charge and there is a negative charge. And if the mind keeps jumping, like if a monkey keeps jumping from tree to tree, it, the monkey will certainly, in a forest, not have only one type of tree. It will jump from Uh, an immortal tree, what we have here, to a cedar tree, to an oak tree, to another tree. It keeps jumping from one tree to another. The monkeys don't say, okay, I only want to jump on cedar trees. In the midst of ten other trees, there will be a cedar tree. Then where do you go? You jump to any other tree, whichever tree is there. That is the meaning of Chan, which is my mind. I mean, we can nice to describe your adult mind very nicely. How is that? The human mind is such. It is first of all like a monkey, chancha. Not like an ordinary monkey. It is like a monkey that has drunk a bottle of alcohol. Not only that, it is like a monkey that has drunk a bottle of alcohol and that also has been stung by a scorpion. The mind of a human being is like a monkey first. It is like a monkey that has drunk a bottle of alcohol. Then, not only drunk a bottle of alcohol, it is like a monkey that has drunk a bottle of alcohol and has been stung by a scorpion. And, Swamiji is very dramatic, you know, very nice reason. It is worse than that also. It is like a monkey that has drunk a bottle of alcohol and that has been stung by a scorpion and into whom a devil has entered. That is human mind. That mind is being described in this verse, in the sixth chapter, by Arjuna to Bhagavan Sri Krishna because Arjuna knows it very well Arjuna is all of us Chanchal mind the mind that keeps going from place to place never stays and I told you it will not stay on one type of tree it will go on every type of tree that monkey well our mind also will do the same that's why I told you you look at in the mirror you will see Marish Marish represents this Chanchal mind and you will you will see that the mind, if we look at our own mind, it will go from good thoughts to bad thoughts. Good thoughts to evil thoughts. Desirable thoughts to undesirable thoughts. It will go from positive thoughts to negative thoughts. This is what the mind will do. This is what the world is. Some objects in the world are undesirable things. Some things are desirable. But this is how the mind will go from place to place. It will not stay firmly on one subject matter on one subject it must stay. The chitta ekagata is not there. The mind chanchal will keep going from place to place. As you know said, it is strong and stubborn and churning and it is even more difficult to control than a wind. Wind you might be able to control, you know. You can make the wind work for you, change your sails. But this mind, Krishna. So this mind is being described there, and now you see the mind will sometimes be agreeable, sometimes disagreeable. Huh? It is what's called as a contradictory mind. Because if one time it is engaging in all, all nice things, he, go, he goes to the temple and he is very nice and dandy and he speaks nice words and sweet words and this and that in the temple. And when he comes out of the temple, and he has different Kahani starts there. Now see what? Virola Bhasi? Man. Viro and Abhasi man means that, that mind contradicts itself all the time. Contradictory mind. <coughs> they jump from this side to this. This is even a chanchal mind, fickle mind. Huh? So now see. In one line, Maharaj is described as a, such a great devotee of Ram. In the next line, Maharaj is described as Khala, wicked fellow. Manish is explaining to Ravan that I had gone here to destroy the end of Vishwan But he is doing something evil. In the same Mari talk is describing to Ravan 
So now any bow. Then below any I'm any this same he there with great uh, single point in this heel. Look at that there. We look at it. Look. And then we take it. And running, running, running after that there. Bhagavan Ram became tired. But this is what devotees do for Bhagavan. Devotees run after Bhagavan. Dhawani. Bhagavan is doing this now for the day. Dhawani. Devotees run after Bhagavan. Dhawani. We all go in temple and bow down to Bhagavan or not? We bow. Then we look at him, we look at the Lord, we feast our eyes there. And, and doing this, doing this for years, we get tired also. Because we go to this uh, pilgrimage, we go to that mandir there, we go there everywhere, Kashi, Vindra, Vindavan, Mathura, everywhere. We thakani. We get tired of it. So now, the idea is, this devotee is so powerful. This devotee who has chanchal mind. If this devotee can make that jump from that side to the other side, where he gave up this wicked thing and now only started thinking about Bhagwan Ram. Bhagwan Ram will now do sadhana. Devotee doesn't have to do sadhana. The, the only recourse in the Bhakti market, the only recourse for a devotee who has a chanchal mind is for that devotee to surrender that mind to Bhagwan. That devotee doesn't have to do any sadhana. No, Bhagwan will do sadhana. Because when we go there and we, we are running after the Lord, we are looking at the Lord, we are bowing down before the Lord. That is our sadhana. Now Bhagavan is doing sadhana. You will see that is the expression there in Gita Oli. How wonderfully that the Lord Himself comes to do sadhana and Mahārī becomes sadhya. And in the end He gives it mukti. No. This is the first thing, Mari Prabhupada did chanchal mind. And that's why he's being described on two sides. He's being described as a great soul who gets mukti and he's also khal. But one more reason why he's being described as khal, I'll tell you now. See, a person's nature will remain a person's nature. There's a wonderful shloka in the third chapter. Again, from Gita, you will hear this. <laughs> Rakshas. 
and Miles was born doing all wicked things with his mother, Tadka and brother Subha. They were doing wicked things only. And this was the dominant guna. This tamasic guna of Rakshas. And so he went on doing all these wicked things. It so happened that Bhagavan Ram struck him with that arrow and from that day he started thinking about Ram. Okay. Please see how wonderfully this whole thing unfolds. Huh? Now, Ravan brings a proposal to him. And actually, this is not something that Mahesh could have refused also. Because Ravan told if you don't go and help me kidnap this Sita, then I will kill you here itself. And now Mahesh thought, oh, what is this? If I stand here, Ravan will kill me. If I go there to kidnap Sita Ji, Ram will kill me. Look, whether I go there, let Ram kill me. That's the other thing. If Ram kill me, I will go to Narak. So I better go there. Quick thinking. Eh? So now, in this verse of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is asking Bhagavan a question. He says, Prabhu, that a person Engaging, engages himself in power as though against his wish. And he shall not be washed there. But Adivani, like by some force, is pushing to do that evil thing. In other words, it is not Maharaj's wish to go there to kidnap Siddharthi. And here, Arjuna is telling, my, my dear Lord, it appears as though there is something inside of us that makes us go and do all of this wicked thing. There is something pushing. What is that thing? It is the question here. Atha kena prayukto yam papa charati. Purusha, purusha means a man. What is that thing by which the man goes and does wicked things? He will do. Against his wish. And it's not Not wanting, not desiring. So here Maharaj doesn't desire to go there. But he's being pushed by Ravana. And Bhagavan Sri Krishna reply there to Arjuna. Kame Esha Krodha Esha Rajo Guna Samutva Vaha. Bhavash Mahashano Mahapapma Vidya Namita Varinna. Know that this Kame Esha Krodha Rajo Guna. It is Kame and Krodha that arise from Rajo Guna. And Rajo Guna is what? Rajo Guna is what? Guna Maya. And Maya is what? The great power of Bhagavan only. So it is from this Maya. Ravan represents Maya in human form. This is called as Moha. Moha means delusion. It is because of this delusion all the other things come. You see, see eh? Delusion means what? I take myself to be something other than what I am. That is called illusion. I am Satchitananda and I take myself to be DMI. Satchitananda is infinite. DMI is finite. So the finite DMI now always feels a sense of limitation. Apurnatva. And because of that limitation, Apurnatva means incompleteness, the jiva and desires. If I get this, it will make me complete. If I get this, it will make me complete. If I get that, that's karma. Oh, the birth of karma is what? Delusion. So, this karma, Bhagavan is saying in Gita, it's this karma which makes the person do power. And it is this Ravan, which is the source of this karma, is making Mahesh now do something against his. Wish. If the mind is not chancha, the person will never do something against his wish. The mind has to be chancha. So, that already chancha mind of marriage. But with a chancha mind also, a person can still make a right choice. In this case, this marriage, by the power and force of a one's arrow, only started thinking of a one's ram. And then, Bhagavan Ram came to give him mukti. But you see now, in the last, why is called a wicked? 
And his last one, this is after number
and, and, and he said they were Maharaj is engaged in an evil act. Maharaj's mind is having love for. So that mind can harbor love for the Lord, and that mind can also direct that boy to want to do something evil. At the same time, that is called a chanchal mind. Chanchalam hi mana krishna pramati balavantra. Strong and that mind is impossible to master. They could control the wind. For such devotee, what is required? Surrender. Mari surrendered to the will of Ravan and he has surrendered to the arrow of Ravan. There is no resistance. There is no resistance from Ravan and there is no resistance from Rama or Rama shot him. In fact, he went there with the intention that Rama will shoot him. No resistance. When that devotee can surrender like that, the Lord takes over and the Lord gives Trat Mukti. The Lord does sadhana. But the devotee. This is how this Rakhal Mahasad is in Gosami Tulsidashi is so powerfully presented. The Lord Himself comes to do everything. What is required? Submitting, surrendering. This is the teaching of the Bhakti Mahat. Now see, whatever is being told there is being shown here. Chanchal mind, and Chanchal mind has only one recourse surrender. But one will take over. And why we do things? We are pushed by calm growth. The, the Arjuna's question is being answered here in direct uh, drama on the stage. Ravan comes with Moha, the source of calm, and pushes him to do something against his will. Okay, now you get to the connection of so many verses. We will be seeing this all week uh, between this Gita and this. Rama. Alright. Okay.